best aircraft in the Air Force. It's a flying dune castle. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. This is way too much fun. Oh, I love my job. I love my job. I beyond love my job. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Clowney, Commander, 4th Special Operations Squadron. I think our aircraft is uh, the best in the Air Force because of our weapon suite, our sensor suite, and our ability to provide uh, persistent, consistent, close air support to guys on the ground. It takes 13 highly skilled crew members to make this weapon system effective. Not only those 13 crew members that are flying the aircraft, but the maintainers that get that aircraft up in the air. It is a total team effort between ops and maintenance. Without maintenance, we couldn't do the mission, and without ops, we could not do the mission. Master Sergeant Brian Riley, Production Superintendent. The ops tempo we have here at the gunships is pretty high. We fly training missions with our actual mission aircraft that we send to war, so it takes quite a bit to keep them flying and keep them the rotation going on between airplanes and AOR and airplanes at home stations. So roughly it takes about a day to get a plane ready to fly, and we're flying five airplanes a day. It takes us about five to six hours of inspections, about two hours of loading munitions on the airplane, an hour to put fuel on it, and then the Pro Super gets about 45 minutes to an hour to do his walk around, his final look over the aircraft. And then you'll have an air crew come out, and it takes about uh, an hour or so to launch an airplane, which is consists of engine start, taxiing the hot cargo, getting their full munitions load of the 40 and 105, and then, of course, restarting their engines and taxiing out to the runway. Staff Sergeant Summerall, air crew flight equipment. Before the crew members step, uh, we provide them with their oxygen equipment, which is their, their mask that they actually wear on the plane, all their emergency O2 equipment, their smoke masks, we fly all the comm gear, Kim gear. We go out and check the parachutes on the aircraft, make sure nothing's wrong, ripped, teared, frayed, or anything like that, all before the aircrew fly. Captain Nick Beal, pilot. We fly and manage the air crew of 13 aboard the AC-130U, uh, just like a C-130, but it uh, has the ability to shoot. That's where the A comes in. We take off, uh, get the airplane where it needs to go, maintain a stable platform for the shooting, and uh, make sure the guys are safe on the ground, then we fly home. The pilot's almost a bus driver to get somewhere. The people in the back are the ones that are making that happen. The navigator talks to the people on the ground. And so he really gets a first-hand feel. He's our mouthpiece to what's going on on the ground. First Lieutenant Jonathan Hamilton, navigator. As a navigator, you're responsible for all the basic things, so like weather planning, route planning. You're an integral part of the tactical crew, too, because you're helping the FOCO confirm up targets. We also need you on the radios talking to the ground party, because as a navigator, that's your primary job in the tactical environment. They're trying to figure out what's going on, and you're trying to paint that picture for them, because they don't really know. It can get crazy. Senior Amron, Elizabeth Rodell, Aerial Gunner. We load ammunition and we fix the guns if they get broken. You've got someone at the 25, someone working the 40. Someone working the 105. Staff Sergeant Joe Scoger, Loadmaster. As a Loadmaster on the AC-130, you're a systems expert as far as flight controls, hydraulics, actual landing gear, emergency equipment. You're also a scanner for uh, threats, and you're also looking at possible threats to the ground party from uh, you know outside the actual uh, area that we're working. The pilot can't do it by himself. It's, it's impossible. I mean, we could get somewhere, but we would not effectively be able to employ the weapon 